malaadun nas fi dinin wa dunya badulun duna manin bin nawali shuja'un fi ikhtiyadin wa ihtinamin ila al islam ma tarkil muhali jawadun ikfa institute Al Madina Travel Salum Jida Sen Info International ak Tori Hatija Nia in America si njital sunyu Imam Muhammad Muntaha Saho nyolin di mai emission bu mag bi di sen dine This uh, insightful lecture I mean as parents we all can see ourselves in what Abdul Aziz was uh, sharing. You know, in this culture, you do everything you want to do, you can do for your kids. And at the age of puberty, of young adulthood, this child is now taken by the university and when the kid is at university they are as big as their parents they also think that they are as mature as their parents but reality is they are not so if they are not well prepared at home then so many and, and uh, so, so many things that was never were never expected could occur at university. As he also said in the beginning that when we have the kids here coming to recite, to read, to study the Quran, we just don't say that they have three hours at the masjid when they come home, it's khalas, it's finished. We know that if we were to do the same thing when it comes to school, kids would never make it happen. When they go to school, we know that the learning is not at school, it's at home. Likewise, the learning of the Quran, the learning of the Islamic studies, the learning of the Arabic they do here at the masjid, the true, the real learning is at home. So inshallah, it's a teamwork. You help us help your kids, or you help us help you. Khamna balanyo demchi sunyo benen lecture bi. Li sunyo li Abdul Aziz don wa. Lola puna banya bay khel nakhtemit mom chilol. Lay Jehal Dundam, Jang Ag Jangle. Balamo Nek Assistant Principal at Wagner. Limudon Ligay Moy, the train Jangle Kachi. To Boneke Ji High School, Hamgane. Li Para Imuntegis Gisendo Miyup, Ba Lini Gisto Dunkonango Yoyaguigis. Konagua Jimuani. Je suis un homme qui a été fait. 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 Dom moi set dal khol. Mouahne dom moi taru aduna. Mouahne dom mayam la momiala. Hiba. Mouahne dom moi menyitu begil gim def chidigen tenyari weju. Mouahne dom yir mandela. Yo yepu naksu nyuka yalla johe. Lunchi man, nain ko chi jem. Lunchi man utit, nain ko chi jem. Dah lo mana am chi aduna, sufekene amulo anjabot, ginga bega. 
danak am am bob da fay melni da fay dess lo meuna am ci aduna su fekke say do melu ni nga bëgg ñu mel danak am lo dara te nak community yu ndaw yi fu nek ñu am fa jakk di fa dajé di jangalanté di waxanté ëpp na xép waye tips yi mu joxé yi gannaaw bës bu sét mënu ñoo dajé yoy ëpp na baña baye xel li ci dess ngay ñaan rek ah tamit lo mëna defit ah ñaan mëna lu né ben nit yalla mo daan wax né ñaan bu mëné indi yonent yalla muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam ñaan mëna lu né i was just trying to do some short translation of what brother abdul aziz just said regarding the importance of the um involvement of the parents when it comes to the education of the kids as he said the mother is the first teacher and as allah ta'ala tells us that our kids are the coolness of our eyes they are allah ta'ala's glad tidings they are the fruit of the love and the mercy allah ta'ala has placed in the hearts of the married men and women they are the gift of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are the zina zinatul hayati dunya the vanity and the beauty of this dunya all these things demand that we take care of our kids take good care of them we just don't want to make sure they just go to school and come back we want to make sure that we know what they doing at the school when they come how they behave what did they pick up how to help them grow both when it comes to their educational uh, part of it and the spiritual part of it so inshallah before we um, go to our next speaker our beloved brother imam hassan abdul akbar we'll have some of the kids uh, recite um i'm going to call um sayda maryam zahra sayda maryam zahra is here she's reciting suratul mutaffifin suratul mutaffifin yes go ahead وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابي تعنيهم بهجارة من سكين فذاهم قاس يأتي صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله إن that Allah تبارك وتعالى is showing us that no matter how falsehood you know is strong apparently truth will come to win will prevail no one knows who abraha is now and those people who are helping abraha but this message of allah this house of allah because when abraha came to destroy the kaaba the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi grandfather was the chieftain of mecca and he seized all their cattle and wealth when he came to see him he told him i need my wealth my cattle say are you here to talk about your personal wealth knowing that i'm going to destroy this kaaba because of which you are honored and dignified he said this is my wealth the kaaba has an has a rabb inna lil kaabati rabban the kaaba has allah tabarak wa ta'ala who owns it and allah will protect it so this uh, surah talks about that event which occurred during you know this very time the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born um yes abdul aziz you have something okay so inshallah now we're going to um call uh, zahra to recite surah al mutaffifin is zahra around <laughs> بها المقربون إن الذين أجرموا كانوا من الذين آمنوا يتقون وإذا مروا بهم يتغامدون 
Are you finished or are you you not finished yet? So let me, huh? Okay. You're finished, inshallah. <laughs> so let me um, comment, huh? Inshallah, Surah Al Mu, Surah Al Mutaffifin. Surah Al Mutaffifin is. I'm gonna say it again. One of the most <laughs> beautiful surahs. And um, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala talks about the cheaters, those who cheat in business. You know, no, no, just let me finish. Yes, so, uh, those who cheat in, in business. الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ when they do business with you, when you owe them something, they will get it in full. When they have to give you something, they will make a way to get away with it. And um, sometimes some of us, when we deal with the non-Muslims, we think, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, yes, some people, they think when it comes to the non-Muslims, you know, it's not that, well, it is more dangerous. It's, uh, because the Holy Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tells us, when one day he asked the Sahaba, do you know who is the bankrupt? The, the Sahaba said the bankrupt is the one with no business, with no money. But the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tells them that Bankrupt, the bankrupt in his ummah is one who goes on the ummah to the to the judgment with salah, with zakah, with hajj, with acts of worship. A lot of acts of worship. But he did so and so and so to so and so. He did such and such to so and so. He wronged so and so. He cheated so and so. He did to so and so so and so. And there, there is no money. There, there is no merchandise. What you have there, your good deeds. And the good deeds will be taken and be given to the one whom we wronged. If we have our good deeds given and we have nothing more to give, then their sins will be thrown to us. I mean, can you imagine the sin of a person who's never made a sujot is thrown to you? So eating the people whom we call non-Muslims, eating their wealth, you know, in a wrongful way is even more dangerous. You know, when Allah Ta'ala says, lil He didn't say those who cheat in business when it comes to the believing men and women. He said, it's a general, you know, ayah that has to do with every single business. And in the middle of the surah, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is categorizing people. Al-Fujjar and Al-Abrar. The bad ones and the good ones. May Allah make us among the good ones. In al abrara lafi na'im wa in al fujara lafi jahim. But there are people who are above al abrar, al muqarrabun. So Allah is inviting us to not only be good, but to be among the best, the nearest ones to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And He said, when you are to compete, it's not for money or for wealth, for dunya or for whatever it is. But the competition it has to be done 
to be the best. وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافس ومزاجه من تسنيم عين يشرب بها المقربون. And at the end, Allah Taala is saying that when you are trying to do something good, and the people of dunya laugh at you, see you as awkward, make you know fun of you, sometimes even go further and torture you, as we can see in the world. He says, "Wait on the day of judgment." That's when. The laughter is useful, and on the day of judgment, it is the believing men and women who will be laughing. You know, it's not about who laughs first, but it is about who laughs last. فاليوم الذين آمنوا من الكفار يضحكون. You know, today it's the believing men and women who are being laughed at. وَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah says وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ As for the believing men and women who have taqwa, they will be above every single one who laughed at them in this dunya. So when we do business, we want to make sure we think of Surat Al-Mutafifin. Whatever we say, it has to be truth. Whatever we do, it has to be just. Not because I'm dealing with so and so. Because for some, they think if you can get away with it, then it's okay. And the Prophet tells us that the truthful businessmen will be with the Anbiya in Jannah. It's a very insightful surah, like every surah of the Holy Quran. It looks like um, Maryam Zahra has some thing else to go through I so Amina Amina do you have something for her or what is it? Okay. What do you say before you Masha Allah. And that's what, <laughs> what most of you so you doesn't don't want. Because I'm sure there are many people on the way coming. We cannot uh, wait for everyone. We had a very beautiful uh, uncle, Baiwali. Uh, I've never seen someone like Baiwali. He's one of the most beautiful people. He passed a couple of months ago. He was my beloved uncle, you know. He came here a couple of times, but when the first time he saw me, I'm his nephew. And he used to um, uh, help the kids in Harlem Islamic Center, the Zawiya of Al Haj Mali. He established the programs there for kids. He volunteered his time, his talent, his knowledge, his everything. As Dr. Abdul Aziz is volunteering his time here and knowledge, and as the two Fatimas there, that's as most, as all of you are now volunteering your time coming here. But Baiwali was, if, if we could say perfect, perfect. And you know, our community, when it comes to time, sometimes we have some issues. Tell them to come five. Some will go on over the Nine. They come nine. Yeah, I mean. So Bayawali had this um, kids program, the, an the anniversary of this kids program. And I think he invited Serin Mansu, one of our mashayikh in Senegal, to give the lecture. And he told people at 6 p.m., mm -hmm. 6 o'clock, the program will start. 6 p.m., like we have like a couple of people. He said, sitting me, she said, we said 6 p.m., so let's start the program. Let's start the program. By 9 o'clock, people, you know, 
arrived and the, 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 the hole was packed. But he said that we were finishing at night. <laughs> Everybody just arrived. He said, ah, sitting one day, never let you handle anybody. And I couldn't get you. We said we were going to end it at nine. So please make, make that. By what? No, 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 good. What did we say, nine? So, and he ended the program. <laughs> and everybody was saying, by what? He's crazy. But next year, everybody came on time. So that's what we want here, too. We want, inshallah, to try to, you know, do things as early as possible, because we don't want people to lose the next day, you know? And if you stay here until one o'clock, two o'clock, before you go back home, it's almost, you know, fajr. And then you lose the next day. We don't want to harm. I mean, it's not easy, but we are going to, to try, inshallah, uh, ta'ala. Uh, uh, Baiwali is make dua for him. He's, he's one. Even at his um, on his deathbed, he was contributing to this masjid and to other masjids. I came from Umrah and I had a bottle of Zamzam. I went to see him at, in the hospital, and I gave him the the, 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 the bottle. I think it's of five gallons, right? Zamzam, yes. And when I was leaving, he gave me $100 or $200. I said, Bye, Wali, <laughs> what is this? He said, no, 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 you have to. I said, no, I'm not going to take it. Why? Said, no, 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 it's not for you. It's for the masjid. I said, but Bye, Wali, you are sick. We want to make dua for you. He said, no, it's for the masjid. You have to take it. And when he passed, a brother told me that every single Friday, he would give him, I think, $250 for the masjid of, our, of, of, of their community there. And he was sick. And this sister knows, you know, because whatever I'm saying about Bay Awali, she and her husband knows better, oh, Sister Rama. They were his family. He died at the hands of her husband. And she was the one cooking, taking care of him, doing everything for him. And Bay Awali was a person, even if, I mean, you know, when people ask you to do something again, I mean, uh, more again and again, you feel like you don't want to do it. But by Wali, you feel like you want to serve him, you want to do it. That's how good he was, mashallah. But one of the things I learned from him is, you know, the fact that he was punctual. When it comes to time, he was like this. And if he has something to tell you, he's not going to say it behind you. He's not going to say, man. the so I mean, if I say it in English, it's not going to be funny. <laughs> And it shouldn't be funny. So uh, he said before they had their place, they must get there. They wanted to rent a place. And somebody told them, he knows the owner. And they went to, and he, they, they even selling it. So he and that person and the husband of the sister went to see uh, that company. And the company were not even selling. They didn't even, they didn't even know the guy. So when they were coming back, he said to the guy, why can't you? Stop lying. <laughs> Why do you lie? It's not good to lie. Don't do that again. That's how he was. <laughs> May Allah have mercy on him. I mean, we're, we're saying this because these are the people, uh, you know, to whom we, look, we need to look up. You know, when you talk about them, they, they give you more iman. He was a mu'min. He was a believer. 
you know, may Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala make it easy uh, for his family and may Allah have mercy on him. Another thing he, I, I'm going to, going to share about him, he said, uh, Sal Suleiman said that when the bus by Wali, the poor hag mom, Munekodinala work and now gay. Then a big gay jote ham now, Mujuko. Then a Jesuboga Manuka by Wali, Mandi Boganala wanted. Don't think for me, he said. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to but what I wanted to say regarding this hadith that I just recited that has to do with uh, what to say when one goes out. I wanted to say that this din of ours doesn't give us any moment of our life except that it tells us what to do at that very, at that very moment. Our life is governed fully governed by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. There is no moment that we can miss that we do not have the opportunity to be connected to Allah ta'ala. When you go out, what do you say? You say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Meaning I'm going out in the name of Allah, relying upon Allah, on Allah, for there is no hawl, nor quwa except for Allah. Meaning no one can do nothing. You know, whatever happens, happens because Allah wa ta'ala has willed it subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no moment that we do not have the opportunity of getting closer to Allah. Even when the person goes to the bathroom, they say what? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubthi wal khabaith. When the person I, I gets out of the bathroom, Allah, I'm seeking your forgiveness. Why? Because I have eaten this fruit, I have drunk this water, and maybe I have not used it for what you wanted me to use, this food that I have eaten and digested and then got, got relieved. When, even when you go to the bathroom, when you go to, to, to bed, Bismillahumma amut wa ahya, to remind yourself that this sleep of yours is the sister of death. Anything can occur. But if you happen to die, you have died in the name of Allah Ta'ala. Bismillahumma amutu ahya. And one of the du'as of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu when going to bed, he said, Allahumma bismika wada'atu janbi wa bismika arfa'uha. Allahumma in amsakta nafsi faghfir laha wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bima tahfadhu bihi salihina min ibadik. So Allah, if you decide to take my soul, forgive it. If you decide to let me live longer, protect me, protect my soul as you have protected the righteous. No room. In the hadith said that the Holy Prophet used to recite the Quran all the times. He never stopped recite, reciting the Quran except if he is in the state of Janaba. لم يكن يحجبه شيء من القرآن ليس الجنابة. So this is our beloved Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. So خارم جاو توتي دونه. The Arabic them to nini lekugunyo. By the way, as I said, we're here to recite. We're here to benefit from these beautiful teachers. But we're here. To collect money. Khal is money for him. You know, we're here to raise friends. So, inshallah, whatever we um, can do, we know that this is why we're here. Alhamdulillah. So, whenever you see people coming to a fundraiser, know that those people are the generous people. Because Kai Jokhe Khal is money. Kuchinyore. Ngapa Siyene Jokhe Khal is.
So we have here. So whenever we give at the table, she's going to be recording it, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we have Brother Uthman, Uthman Surah Tutin. Is Uthman here? Uthman Young. Where's Uthman? Huh? MashaAllah. Surah Al Adiyat. Uh, teen is written here. Surah Al Adiyat. Good. Bismillah. One of the most beautiful surahs of the of the Quran. This surah is the the Holy Prophet surah. It comes right after Surah to Muhammad between Surah to Muhammad and Surah to Hujrat. Surah known as the chapter of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu and the surah known as the chapter of the apartments of the apartments of the Holy Prophet Al-Fatih means a victory. 
This is the surah that is announcing the victory of the Holy Prophet وسلم, over his enemies. You know? When, 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 and it is announcing is it when it was very, very difficult. It's so just announcing the victory now of Gaza and the Philistine against the enemies, not only of the Philistines, but the enemies of humanity. The Zionists occupying power and their allies. When you have tens of thousands of innocent people being murdered, you know, and nobody's saying much. You know, before we used to say that Israel does not respect the international law. Israel does not respect the resolutions of the UN. But now Israel is not just disrespecting their resolutions, but Israel is killing members of UN in Palestine. Journalists, medical doctors. You can, I don't know if you if you watch uh, what happened with uh, Dr. Munir, Dr. Munir of, of of Gaza. One of the most beautiful people. He's now at uh, in, in in hospital. What happened? He said his two daughters, they were, you know, um, fighting. Who's going to sleep on his on his bed? And one of them, you know, slept there, Jannah. And what happened is when Israel bombarded him while sleeping, it is that his daughter who was killed. It's, it's like his daughter, Fadat Habi, baby Ruhiha. And all his daughters and his children memorized the Quran. You know, they're killing like doctors, journalists. And you are saying that Gaza, that Philistine, will win, will have victory over their enemies. And they will, inshallah. This is the, how difficult it was with the Prophet Sallallahu and his Sahaba, when Allah Ta'ala is announcing them that they will go into to overcome. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu lived in uh, Mecca for 53 years before he migrated to Medina. At the age of 40, Allah appointed him as a prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he spent 13 years calling people to Islam. And they didn't do anything but trying to kill him. They had a meeting at Darul Nadwa. And they wanted to decide what to do with the Prophet ﷺ for good. Some say, we're just going to put him in prison until he dies. Some say, no, we're just going to, you know, wrap him with a camel and let him go starving until he dies. Some say, no, 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 because there are chances for him to survive. survive. What are we going to do? We're going to kill him for good. How we're going to see the strongest youth, young people of the of Quraysh, the sub tribes of Quraysh, they will go and kill him. But no, Hashim cannot fight with everyone, and if they want money, we give them whatever they want. But we 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 can do no more. That's when Allah Tabaraka wa Taala told him to now migrate to Medina, and he was he was in Medina for six years. He had this love to go back to the Kaaba. Some of us just went one time to, the, to, to Mecca, and they would die, you know, to go back. They love to go back, and they just went once in their lifetime. Imagine the Holy Prophet who was born next to the Kaaba, who lived there, and knows that this is the house Allah, of Allah, the, house, the first house ever built for Allah, and he is the first ruh ever created by Allah. Look at that. Can you see the law he's supposed to have? And he had for, for, for the Kaaba. And he was deprived of going to the Kaaba. Allah wa ta'ala showed him in his dream that he's going back to the Kaaba. And when he decided to go in the middle of the road, he was stopped. 
You know, he was next to Mecca. Hudaybiyah is not next to Medina. He's like almost part of Mecca. And he was stopped. You're not going to make it. Ikfa Institute, Al Madina Travel, Salum Jida, Sen Info International, Aktori Hatijania in America, Si Njital Sunyu Imam Muhammad Muntaha Saho, Nyolin Dimai, Emission Bumak, Bidi Sendine.